opening scene, we are introduced to an elderly homeless man, aka Hobo, traveling on a train. After a while, he gets off the train and enters a city called Hope Town, which has a graffiti-covered welcome sign that reads, Scum Town. Later, Hobo is seen walking on the streets, pushing a shopping cart filled with various discarded items. During this time, he encounters an aspiring filmmaker who is recording a street fight. The filmmaker approaches Hobo and offers him 10 bucks to participate in the fight. However, Hobo simply ignores him and walks away. I'm a hobo, not a bum. As he reaches a bit further, he suddenly hears a distressed voice from behind. Upon turning around, he sees a man named Logan, whose face is covered in blood, with a manhole lid stuck on his neck and his hands tied. Logan approaches several people on the street seeking help, claiming that someone is pursuing him, but unfortunately, nobody is willing to assist him. Shortly after, a modern white car arrives. Logan turns to Hobo for help, but the latter disregards his plea and continues on his way. Right then, a mini truck arrives out of nowhere and collides with his shopping cart, causing his collection to scatter. Following this, a man named Drake, dressed in a white suit, steps out of the truck, revealing a pistol stuffed in his waistband. Simultaneously, Drake's two sons, Slick and Ivan, step out of the modern car and label Logan as a betrayer. It is revealed that Logan is Drake's younger brother, but their relationship is strained and broken. As the crowd watches on, Slick and Ivan grab Logan by his arms and drag him towards a nearby manhole. They forcefully push him down the hole, leaving his body suspended inside while his head remains above the ground. Then, in a twisted manner, Drake addresses the onlookers as if they are part of an audience and considers Logan as a lucky contestant. He commands everyone to witness the spectacle and proceeds to fasten a barbed wire around Logan's neck, connecting the other end to the modern car. After this, he orders Slick to begin the show, and the latter accelerates the car at a high speed. This results in poor Logan's head being severed from his body. After the commotion ends, Drake holds the detached head and issues a warning to everyone, saying that they could be the next lucky contestant in his show. Meanwhile, Hobo collects his belongings in his shopping cart and continues wandering the streets. Along the way, he comes across a pawn shop and notices a lawnmower that captures his interest. However, upon reading the price tag of $49.99, he lets out a sigh and walks away. That same night, Hobo positions himself on a pathway, holding a sign that reads, I'm tired, need money for a lawnmower. Unfortunately, a group of rude teenagers approaches him and disrespectfully spits on his sign. After some time, Hobo spots Slick exiting his modern car and entering a building. Curious, he follows the guy inside, only to discover Drake's gang members torturing and murdering people in an arcade-like game. As Hobo watches everything from a corner, Slick starts to harass a young boy named Otis, who owes him money. Seeing this, an escort named Abby intervenes, urging Slick to release Otis, since he is just a child. She then proceeds to walk away, but Slick persuades her to accompany him to another room, promising to pay her good. Hobo, who has been closely observing Slick's actions, silently follows them. Once inside the room, Slick and Abby start making out. However, they are interrupted when a masked man enters through the garage door. He is there to actually kidnap Abby and sell her on the black market. But fortunately, Hobo arrives in the nick of time and stops the man. This angers Slick, prompting him to bring out a knife and advance towards Hobo. But against all odds, the old beggar knocks him out by striking him with a bag of coins. He then carries the gangster to the police station tosses him onto the desk, demanding the officers arrest him. Not only that, Hobo also insists on speaking with the police chief, so he is directed to wait in an interrogation room. Shortly after, a high-ranking police officer enters the room. Hobo urges him to take strict action against all the criminals in the town, explaining that the situation is getting out of control. The officer acknowledges his concerns, but reveals that almost all the cops in town are friends with Drake, so going against him is possible. Saying this, the officer suddenly changes his demeanor and points a gun at Hobo. At the same time, Drake's sons also arrive at the scene and start beating up Hobo. Slick even carves the word scum into his chest. After this, two police officers callously discard Hobo into a garbage bin. In the next scene, Abby is trying to make a deal with a guy for the night. When the injured Hobo stumbles upon her, seeing his pitiful condition, she brings him to her place and tends to his wounds. She even lets him stay at her place for the night. 
The following morning, Hobo goes to the same filmmaker from earlier and takes up the offer. He willingly subjects himself to a series of demeaning acts, such as smashing a glass bottle against his head and chewing its shards. Once he has earned enough money, he revisits the same pawn shop and decides to purchase the lawnmower. But suddenly, a group of three robbers enters the shop and takes a woman and her baby hostage. They then threaten the shop owner to give up all the money. Witnessing all this, Hobo becomes really annoyed and decides to take matters into his own hands. He angrily grabs a shotgun from a nearby shelf and fatally shoots the robbers one by one. Once the commotion is over, Hobo realizes that Hopetown is in dire need of justice. Hence, he has a change of heart and decides to buy the shotgun instead of the lawnmower. Wondering what he was going to do with that mower is going to bug me forever. From that point forward, Hobo embarks on a relentless mission to eliminate numerous criminals, starting with the filmmaker. Armed with his shotgun, he continues his crusade by targeting a pimp, a drug dealer, and a pedophile disguised as Santa Claus. With each act, he becomes a vigilante, delivering justice to those who have wronged the innocent. News of his courageous actions quickly spreads throughout the city, drawing the attention of the bad guys. In a fit of anger, Drake shoots the television screen and berates his sons for allowing Hobo to escape. This humiliates Slick and Ivan, so they set out to eliminate Hobo and make their dad proud. In the next scene, the brothers board a school bus and ruthlessly slaughter 14 children using a flamethrower. <laughs> okay. In a further display of brutality, they storm a television station during a live broadcast and murder the anchorman for praising Hobo. The brothers then continue the live broadcast and issue a chilling threat to the public. If they don't kill all the homeless people in town, their own children will suffer the same fate. In response to the threat, a horrifying massacre of the homeless population ensues in the town, with even police officers engaging in the violence. In the midst of this commotion, Abby is heading home when she is approached by two officers. One of them decides to exploit her for the night, but she refuses his advances and flees. Enraged, the officer pursues her and corners her near a dumpster. He attempts to assault her, but just in the nick of time, Hobo intervenes and shoots the officer with his shotgun. He then offers to accompany Abby home. However, a large crowd approaches them, prompting Abby to quickly devise a plan. She conceals Hobo in a shopping cart, covering it with the remains of the deceased officer. The plan works, and the two manage to pass through the crowd undetected. Protected. Shortly after, they reach Abby's residence, and Hobo finally exits the cart. To his misfortune, Otis, who is nearby, spots them and promptly informs the gangster brothers. Inside Abby's apartment, Hobo shares his idea of starting a lawn mowing business. He wants to get away from the violence and earn decent money. Surprisingly, Abby supports his idea and agrees to help him out. The two then decide to escape hometown and begin a new life together. However, their plans are disrupted. When Slick and Ivan arrive at the apartment, and break into Abby's room. Ivan inflicts wounds on Hobo using his ice skate shoes. While Slick pursues Abby, he corners her against a wall, but she fights back by grabbing a shard of glass and slashing his face. Unfortunately, this only angers Slick more, and in an act of revenge, he grabs a saw and begins hurting her neck. I heard this movie was available on Disney+. Plus. Meanwhile, Hobo manages to subdue Ivan by electrocuting him with an appliance. Upon hearing Abby's screams, he rushes to her aid and holds Slick at gunpoint. The latter tries to claim his innocence, but Hobo hears none of it and shoots him in the balls. Amidst the commotion, Ivan regains consciousness and runs away, but Hobo has no time to pursue him. Instead, he loads Abby onto his shopping cart and rushes her to the hospital. Meanwhile, a fatally injured Slick contacts his father and informs him about the situation. As he ends the call, he hallucinates a burning bus in which Hobo locks him and leaves him to die. But in reality, he passes away due to severe loss of blood. On the other hand, Hobo reaches the hospital and threatens the doctor to save Abby. They immediately comply out of fear and begin the surgery on her. Elsewhere, Drake, who mourns the loss of his beloved son, decides to recruit a pair of armored demons known as Rip and Grinder, collectively known as the Plague. The following day, Abby regains consciousness and finds Hobo by her side. He presents her with a small potted flower as a keepsake and prepares to leave. Abby tries to stop him, arguing that he cannot solve all the world's problems only with his shotgun. But Hobo simply says, that is all I know. 
As he departs, he passes by the maternity ward and takes a moment to speak to the infants, expressing concern for their future in a town that's a living nightmare. He hopes that they will grow up to become hobos with shotguns, but ones who are even better than himself. Shortly after, the plague breaks into the hospital and mercilessly slaughters the staff members in their path. Upon hearing the chaos, Hobo rushes back to Abby's ward, only to be captured by the plague. They confine him in a trunk and transport him to Drake who plans to publicly execute him. When Abby learns that her only friend has been captured, she decides to embark on a rescue mission. Her first stop is the pawn shop, where she creates her own weapon by combining an axe with Hobo's shotgun and transforming a lawnmower into a makeshift shield. As she prepares to depart, a crowd confronts her and questions whether she is homeless. They are still following the orders of Drake and are looking to eliminate all the hobos in town. However, this only annoys Abby, prompting her to passionately address the crowd delivering a lengthy speech advocating for the rights of homeless people. The scene then cuts to the streets, where Drake announces his brand new show to the gathered crowd. The plague grabs Hobo, fastens a manhole lid around his neck, and drops him into a pit for execution. Exactly how they did to Logan. But before the process can begin, Abby arrives at the scene and holds Ivan hostage. She demands Drake to let her friend go, but surprisingly, the cold-hearted gangster kills his son himself calling him a disappointment. After this, Grinder goes after Abby, while Rip prepares to execute Hobo. This creates a very tense situation as the crowd watches on. Fortunately, against all odds, Abby manages to kill Grinder using her advanced weapon. She also manages to cut the rope tying Hobo's neck, saving him from decapitation in the nick of time. In the aftermath, an enraged Drake captures Abby and brutally cuts off her hand using the lawnmower shield. But despite the injury, she retaliates and repeatedly stabs Drake with her exposed arm bone. She then rushes to free Hobo, who then aims his shotgun at Rip, forcing him to retreat. Following this, Hobo approaches Drake and aims his shotgun at him. At the same time, the police arrive at the scene and demand that Hobo surrender his weapon. However, the townspeople, who have been inspired by Abby's courage, align themselves with Hobo and turn their firearms towards the police. The support? Hobo ultimately brings an end to Drake's reign by blowing off his head. This prompts the police to shoot Hobo, and the townspeople, in return, open fire on the police. The movie ends as all the people are killed on the spot, while Abby's screams are heard in the background.